What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Goblin and today we're coming in with a Christmas hoot, a jolly holler, St. Nicholas is here to spread the joy. Ladies and gentlemen, we're coming in with a banger of a story, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I hope all of y'all have a wonderful holiday season no matter what you're celebrating, and without further ado, let's dive right into the video. Now I figured this was a very fitting story to tell, and I like to save my holiday stories to drop around the holidays. It doesn't really feel right to tell a story about Christmas or Thanksgiving in July or February or something like that. So this is one that I've been waiting to share with y'all for a while, and I guess you could consider this the 2023 Christmas Special Part 1, because we have another video that's dropping that I guess we'll consider Part 2, but that's coming soon. So... This took place pretty long ago at this point, about five or six years ago. I think it was 2018 Christmas, and I had just dropped out of high school. I was on my full degenerate era, you know. I, I was maybe a year out of high school at this point, not really doing shit, just staying home, doing drugs all day. So, peak degen stage of my life. By the way, if you're at the peak degen stage of your life, you should check out my new brand, Only Gas. Hey, it's not clothing. I I think you could guess what it is. Uh, check the comments for more information or check my Twitter, at The Goblin, and uh, you'll see my pinned tweet. That's all I need to say. Shipping nationwide. Back to the video. So my Christmas dinner on this fateful holiday was ruined by Xanax, and... I had quite the habit of getting really fucked up for family dinners pretty much every time, but this was one where I really, I was like drooling on myself. This was a rough one. So Christmas Eve, the night prior, I had gone out, and that was kind of a tradition among my friends. We would always link up on Christmas Eve and get fucked up and try to go as hard as we could, because the next couple days, a lot of us would be doing stuff with family, or we'd have to go to stuff, or we just wouldn't be able to hang out. So the night of Christmas Eve was a degenerate evening every single year, and this year was no exception. You see, we weren't limiting ourselves to just smoking. This was far before my California sober era. This was years prior to that. In fact, this was even before my cocaine chronicles. Little baby goblin. Little little adolescent goblin. You know, li didn't even know what was going on goblin. I, not really adolescent. No, I was, I was 19, I think, at this point. But either way, I, hey, Hey. But either way, I had spent the night prior out with my friends, and at this point, I was friends with my homie, Tim. Tim is someone who some of you OG viewers may remember through my stories. He was someone that, at this point in my life, we were pretty good buddies, and that is also who I got my bars from. You see, Tim was always the man. He had the script. He had the good script. I would go to Walgreens and pick it up with him. Like, hey, I don't know who his doctor was. That guy, eh, who, hey, hey, he wasn't... I don't know if he should be licensed, you know, it depends on how you look at it, maybe, maybe he should be licensed, depending on, either way, the, his doctor was questionable, but he would go and pick up a fuckload of ladders, two milligram Zans, every single month, and it was so clutch, and he would get refills and shit, it was ridiculous, the doctor had to have known what was going on, like, think, uh, there's no way this kid could be taking this many Zans, like, just for his anxiety, like, oh, dude, he wakes up one morning like, oh, I'm super anxious, bro. I got to pop four ladders. <laughs> hey, doctor said so. <laughs> Shit. No, that's not happening. That's not happening. So I guess that's what his doctor was, was prescribing him, though. This guy had a fuckload, and I would go to Walgreens and pick them up. Like, these were, were the real fucking deal. So I was always thrilled to get a chance to buy these off him. And Christmas Eve, I had gone over there. We'd hung out. We got barred the fuck out. And I bought my little baggie of Zans. I bought, like, five off him. And he wouldn't get a ton at a time. He'd get, like, 30, right? He'd only get, like, 30, but he'd get refills, which I don't understand how the fuck fuck he would do that but he just he was able to do that somehow so he would get refills and I only bought like five of these bitches but five was enough to get me through Christmas five was a very solid holiday for me so after you know I, I chilled at Tim's for the evening I dipped out and I went back home. I got back home Christmas Eve, you know, I had to be in bed early. And this video is not about Christmas Eve after all. So what happened that evening is not very important. But I go to bed, barred the fuck out, and I wake up the following day and it's Christmas. 
At this point in my life, my family relations were somewhat in shambles, you know? This was somewhat recent after dropping out of high school and getting out of rehab. I had also just quit my job to do YouTube stuff full-time, but at this point in my life, I was still dirt broke. I didn't even make four figures a month off YouTube. I was just, I was fucking around. All my income was just through little, like, stupid shit I would do that had nothing to do with YouTube at that point in my life, right? So, I mean, maybe, no, actually, maybe I was, I was making, like, a thousand dollars a month, you know, like not nearly enough money to, to call it a, a real job. Like if I worked anywhere for 20 hours a week, I would make way more money than that. So I'd gone home and I woke up the following day and it was Christmas. My family didn't do very much. It was usually me and my mom and my grandma would come over my grandma and my like step grandpa, I guess her like their, their, you know, boyfriend. I don't think, you know, I don't think they ever got married, but you know, her affiliate, she would bring her affiliate, but I liked him. He's a cool guy. He's a great guy. Not, you know, good dude. So like my affiliate grandpa, Unk, you know, we'll just refer to him as Unk. So grandma would slide with Unk and it would just be me and my mom. And typically that was Christmas. Sometimes there would be like one or two other family members over, but usually that was it. So I was typically able to get pretty fucked up and hold it down because it was my grandma and unk and they were, were very straight edge. They had no idea how to tell when I was zooted unless it was really bad. And this was a Christmas where unfortunately it was really bad. Sometimes I was able to kind of pull it off and only my mom would know. But this Christmas, like even I was self-aware, I was like, wow, that was a rough performance. That was a tough one. I mean, that... Oh, we don't talk about that. So I woke up, and usually we did gifts later in the day. We would typically wait until everyone came over for dinner, and then we would open all the gifts. I was old enough where I didn't have to sprint downstairs at 6 a.m. and wake everybody up and rip the gifts open. I, I had grown a little bit past that. And also, my parents and, you know, everyone in my family who would give me a gift would give me a drug addict gift. And if you don't know what a drug addict gift is, it's essentially a gift that has no resale value and is not cash. So they'll give you gift cards to really obscure places. They won't give you like a Target or Walmart gift card because you can go buy something that you could sell for drugs. So they'll give you a gift card to like Outback Steakhouse or like Chipotle, you know, just just a very obscure spot, right? Where it's like, okay, that's good. But I don't even, I don't even eat Chipotle. I don't even go there, you know? Like, <laughs> like I, don't, I don't go there. But also, they won't give you, like, electronics, you know? My family was kind of instructed at this point to not give me really cash or gift cards to places where I could get cash or give me necessarily many electronics. I, I could get maybe a video game, you know? But I couldn't get very many video games. That would be a little suspicious. Consoles were kind of like, off the table, you know, because I, I had a habit of selling those pretty often. I I would go through the console game. I would sell my Xbox or my PlayStation, whatever's in the rotation, like probably every three months for weed and then just figure out how to get it back. This was a very common thing. So when I was getting ready to go downstairs, I was still up in my room and I was like, damn, well, I guess I need a Xan or two for today, you know, I, I slept so good, but my grandma's coming over and dealing with my grandma is, is a different beast in its entirety. I wouldn't mind taking a little Xan, and hey, that's that's exactly what I did. I popped a ladder and a half. I, I don't remember if it was a ladder and a half. I don't think it was two, though. I, I, I do not think it was two, because at this point, taking two at a time really meant I was going crazy. Like, I was still slowly kind of kind of dosing when I would take Zans. I'd take, like, one, and then I'd take another, maybe an hour or two later, and then after the first two, you, you just kind of start eating them. Like, you just, you just down the hatch. It, it gets a little frisky. But, hey, that's why I stopped taking them, too, because nowadays... All these Zans are fent. Like, you, you can't eat them like that. I remember we used to be younger, and we would just eat these fuckers until we passed out. Like, sometimes we would just pop Zans until we just, like, would fall asleep in the car. And that would that was just the norm. We'd crash at our homie's crib for the night. You know, we'd, we'd just be so fucked up. We'd just pass out. Nowadays, it's, it's scary, man. And, yeah, Fent was around, you know, back in, back in 2016, 2017, 2018 as well. But it's just become so prevalent nowadays. It, it's scary out there, dude. Stop taking pills if you're watching this. 
But I popped a bar and a half and I had gone downstairs and honestly, I, I don't specifically remember what I got this Christmas. This was right after I'd gotten off probation, but my parents kind of knew at this point that I was already back up to no good. The relationship was, a uh, well, my mom knew. I didn't really talk to my dad at this point, so I guess my parents and my family, uh, my family is the better word, kind of knew I was back up to my shenanigans. So the relationship was a little strained. So I don't really remember what I got this Christmas because I was already fucked up when I got downstairs but knowing how my other Christmases have gone I'd imagine I got probably a nice sweater you know a nice hoodie some socks grandma probably bought me like a dictionary or something uh I, I maybe like uh, some sort of like a tiny little globe to put on my desk or just a novel a good read you know which which is fine but uh, let's be real here my attention span has been fried for at least 10 to 15 years the moment I got my hands on a PlayStation 1 controller when I was a child my attention span was out the goddamn window so there was no chance of any novel being read but i would always be like oh thanks grandma you know hey i'm definitely gonna read this like this you know this is the top of my list and uh you know she would ask me about it like a month or two later and i'd be like oh what a read you know just oh my god phenomenal book you know exquisite but either way I'm downstairs, and I'm, I'm still minding my business. I had a bit of a Xan tolerance at this point, so a bar and a half wasn't too crazy. I was still very functional, so I go downstairs, you know, do my thing, but I'm, I'm feeling good. And then the drinks come out. You see, I still wasn't 21 at this point, but I was an adult, and, you know, my, my family treated me as such. They would let me have some drinks on Christmas. They wouldn't let me drink like I do now on the holidays. I tell you, hey, when I'm at the family gathering now... I'm having some good beverages. I'm having some good beverages, but I'm not mixing them with, with other shit. You know, I'm just, just having the bevy. So it's a little more control, but at this point in my life, I was having glasses of the nice wine that my mom had bought with the Zans, and it was just exquisite. I felt like a mother going through a midlife crisis, just went through a divorce. She might have two children. She's got a Honda Odyssey in the driveway, you know, just just tough times for her, popping two Zans and a glass of wine, and she's zooted. That's how I felt. I felt like that, you know, so I was having a very midlife crisis type of Christmas, but my God, dude, one or two glasses of wine off the Zans, I guess. I get it. I get it. I get it why upper middle class stay at home moms are all bartards that drink a lot of wine. I get it. I really, really do. Like, wow, I was feeling good this Christmas. I was feeling great. The problem is I felt too great. And I kind of blacked out a little bit on this holiday. And the reason that I'm telling you this story now is not because I remember everything that happened at dinner very well. This was one of the rare incidents where I actually blacked out. And that's uncommon for me because normally I'm able to control myself, right? Normally control myself to an extent, control myself in the, in the sense of like, you know, I can not black out. I can get really fucked up and I'll think I'm more sober, but I'll appear fucked up. But I feel like I was good at still being on my two feet and, and you know, having a recollection of things. But this was one of those days where I, I blacked out pretty much until, like, dinner time. There was a period in the afternoon where I don't know what the fuck was going on. And it turns out that I had spilled some wine. And I had spilled some wine all over the couch, which was a problem because my mom told me about it the following day. And I'll never forget that conversation because she came in my room the next morning and she was pissed. She woke me up for this argument. And you know, if she was fuming so hard, she couldn't let me sleep for this argument. Hey, that's how I knew it was real. That's how I knew this, this was a problem, right? So I apparently had spilled some wine on the couch and there was a, there was a stain. Luckily, she always was a couch cover kind of woman, which was good. But I was also apparently very sloppy. Now, I don't recall any of this because the only thing I remember from this Christmas is pretty much from dinner time onwards. I remember right before dinner, I remember I went out and I told my parents, I don't know what I told them, but I went out to go smoke. And this was a, a thrilling experience every holiday. I did this every year without fail. And they, they had to know what I was doing. You know, I, I, I told my grandma, I, I told my mom, like, hey, I'm going to smoke a fucking blunt, you know? Not, not really, not really. I probably just told them I was going to take a stroll. But, like... Now that nowadays I do that, now that I'm 21 and up, I do that. But at this point, I was still living with my mom, so I couldn't do that yet. So I, I had to be creative. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm just, 
uh, get to enjoy some fresh air, you know? Yeah, I, uh, Christmas fresh air. Very nice outside, totally not freezing in Illinois. I'm stepping out. So I stepped out and I smoked, and that, like, brought me back, too. That brought me back to ground level. And I was like, fuck, I'm feeling juiced up. You ever get that super warm feeling where you're that kind of fucked up, where you're sweating even in the cold? You're like, damn, I'm hot. I was outside, but I was still like sweating. And I was just like, dude, this is very dangerous. I was walking straight and I I knew where I was. I was able to collect myself and actually take a stroll and have a smoke. But dude, I was not in any condition to sit at a dinner table with my grandmother and have a serious conversation about my life because my grandma fries me every holiday. She is on my ass, bro. She would essentially call me a bum in the most elegant and subtle way that she could every holiday, and it's crazy. And then eventually, you know, as I got older, she stopped doing that. But this was the era in my life, fresh out of rehab. She talked to me like I belonged at Salvation Army. She looked at me as if I was just an absolute degenerate as if my mother had picked up a a crackhead serial killer off the side of the road and invited him to Christmas that's how she looked at me at this point so it was oh baby hey this I was in for quite the dinner so I went on my stroll and I smoked a blunt my signature at this point in my life I was always facing little swishers full of fucking mid And I went back inside and the dinner commenced. Now, my mom had a a bit of a tradition on Christmas. We wouldn't ever really do turkey. Usually it was a pot roast. Pot roast was the big thing that we did for Christmas because my mom did it well. And you couldn't allow my grandmother or unk, you know, her her husband. No, I don't think they ever got married. I don't know, man. Uh, He's been chilling for a while, you know. Hey, shout out Joe. dude. He's been around for a while. His name's name's actually Joe. Um, But either way... You know, Joe, Joe was fucking vibing. We're all vibing. And we, we had our little pot roast and you couldn't allow grandma or Joe to cook the pot roast because they'd make it gray and they didn't, they couldn't season it very well. So we had to, we had to invite them over every year for Christmas because otherwise they'd invite us. And if they invited us, that was a death sentence. I can't do the drugs at grandma's house, and I certainly can't eat that food. I'm going to vomit directly in the crock pot. That's not going to happen. Now, we get this dinner set out, and I felt like a baby that had just gained consciousness. Like, this is the part of Christmas that I remember the best, because I'm sitting at this table, and if you ever just had to stare a family member directly in the eyes for a long period of time while you're, like, extremely fucked up, and you're really trying to hold it together and, like, how, like hold your eyes open wide enough. Because that's what I was doing the whole dinner. And I'm going to be honest, I probably look like a serial killer. I probably looked feral. Like, I might have I might have had blood in my eyes. I feel so bad for my grandmother because I was directly across from her. And I'm trying to make eye contact with her as we're talking and as she's asking me questions. Because that's how it went every family meal. And I just... I couldn't do it. I couldn't fucking do it. And also, I was starting to kind of come down a little bit off the bars. You know, I'd gone about my afternoon. I'd spent my time in the living room, and I was starting to come back, too, and I was fiending a little bit. I had, like, one or two glasses of wine, but they still weren't going to allow me to get fucked up at this kind of thing. I wasn't 21 yet, so... I had to play it cool. So I'm sitting at the table and my grandma's asking me, she's like, so what are you doing for money now? And I remember this so vividly. At this point in my life, she would ask this pretty much every single year. And honestly, I would just bullshit her. I would totally talk out of my ass ass bro i would say the craziest shit i'd be like oh yeah this youtube shit i'm crushing it we're making fucking five thousand dollars a month i mean we are we are up right now you know we are fucking bankrolling and she would buy it she'd be like wow that's so you know that's that's great but the problem is uh, her age was starting to set in so she'd ask the same question every time and i believe that she would just forget my answer every time so it gave me the opportunity to create a new story you know every time well well, this was still my bum era you know my my bum era of my life not doing shit so i would just lie every time and this particular day i was just yeah yeah hey making good money, you know, hey, they, I'm doing so good, and they were like, so how do you make money off of this, and I was like, well, you know, it just uh, adds, you know, ad revenue, but the thing is, my my grandparents, like, they don't, 
they don't understand what that means. They don't know that I get paid from an ad on a YouTube video. I don't even know if they've ever been on YouTube. Like their only source of information is pretty much the television, the news, and and that's that's it. That's it. Like my my grandma does not know how to use a computer whatsoever. It's it's kind of insane. And mind you, I've tried to show her many times. I've gone over to her house and she'll be like, oh, can you can you show me how to do this? She has a little laptop. And I, I've explained like, oh, here's how to send the email. I've shown her. No, I, the knowledge is out the window in five minutes. Like it's an absolute lost cause. If you if I took her to Geek Squad, that would be a prank video in itself. Like I would be trolling those guys. I could never like unleash that terror upon those dudes. But, you know, grandma's cool either way. So I, I was just capping out my ass. I was like, hey, business is booming. We are up exponentially. And she's asking me, she's like, so when are you going to move out of your mother's house? And this was a hot button topic at this point. This was less than a year prior to me getting kicked out of my mom's house. So this was a hot button topic. They wanted me out the jam. My mom wanted me out. My grandma wanted me out for some reason. She didn't even live there. But I was like, damn, if, if they kicked me out today, like I'd be screwed. Like, I don't have any money. Like, I'd be so boned. So I had kind of saved up a little bit over probation, but I blew it all as soon as I got off. And at this point, I was like a year out of probation. And I was just, I mean, dude, we was broke. Hey, we, hey, we was broke, my boy. We, we did not have any money. So I was just like, fuck, like, I don't even, I don't even know how to answer this. But once again, I was like, oh, I'm gonna go to tour some apartments pretty soon. You know, I'm just saving up some more money. I'm pretty close. And she would just fry my ass. She'd be like, well, where's that 5,000 a month going? And I was just like, all right. I got to go to the bathroom and bathroom was keyword for more Xanax. So I stood the fuck up. I go to the bathroom and I take a little bit more. Now I went to the bathroom upstairs. You see, I went upstairs and I had a bathroom by my bedroom. So it was just, it was perfect. I, I go up to my room, you know, I grab my Xans and I just fucking vibe. I don't remember how much more I took here, but I guess a sloppy enough amount because I, well, actually not too sloppy because I, I didn't really black out again. Like there, there, there's a block of that day prior to dinner where I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. I spilled some wine. I was I was sl talking sloppy, I guess. My mom was pissed enough to come in the next morning and yell at me about it. So it must have been rough. But this time around, I, I held it down a little better. So I popped however much I popped. Don't really remember. And I went back downstairs. And I was like, hey, what a better time for a glass of wine, you know, wash down any of the leftover Xanax taste in my mouth. So I have another glass of wine and my mom kind of, I, I grabbed the bottle and she like smacks my wrist a little bit. I remember I was like, this is my last one. I swear. She was like, all right, you know, that's cool. So we're having dinner. My mom's a fantastic cook. You know, dinner was always amazing. I don't really remember uh, the quote, like actually tasting the food. I don't really remember exactly what all the sides she made that year were, uh, but I, I'm very confident it was great. You know, she's a fantastic cook. So we have our, our good little Christmas meal. Grandma's grilling me the whole time. And after we, we kind of finish up and I finish my last glass of wine, I start feeling a little iffy. And this is the problem with drinking off the Xanax is sometimes I'd get the spins. And when I get the spins really bad, I get nauseous and I just feel my stomach start churning. And this is something that normally when I'm just drunk, I won't really get the spins unless I'm extremely, extremely wasted. And normally when I would just take Xans, obviously I'm, I'm not really getting the spins off that. But when I pop a bar or two and I have a small amount of alcohol, it's absolutely over with. So this is the part I remember very well. You see, I'm downstairs in the basement. My mom lived in a townhouse, so it was like, you know, it was a little tri-level setup. But either way, she lived in a townhouse at this point, and I'm down in the basement area by the garage, and I'm vibing downstairs after dinner. And all, you know, my grandma and, and Joe and my mom are all upstairs. And I'm downstairs and I end up vomiting on myself. And I was really fucked up and I was really barred out. And I just, I think my body was just feeling so sedated and loose that I didn't even feel, I, I didn't feel it coming. Like I just had no idea. I ended up puking on myself. So I threw the fuck up all over myself. I threw up all over the fit I was wearing. And then I had to figure out a way to dispose of the vomit and clean it up without going upstairs and like indicating that I had just thrown up. 
The problem was I had no clothes stored downstairs, obviously. My bedroom was upstairs, not in the fucking basement. So I was sitting there like, dude. What do I even do? So I go out to the garage and I take off my hoodie and I just threw it in the garbage. And I was on some disgusting like Bartard splinter cell shit. I threw my vomit covered hoodie in the garbage. I wiped up the rest of the puke on the floor with the hoodie that I was disposing of because there was no paper towel. There was no napkin. There wasn't any like bathroom or anything in the basement. It was just like a room. Like it was just a room. This was a very small basement. It was nothing special, right? I don't even know if you could call it. Well, yeah, it was below ground level. So I guess basement is, yeah, yeah. Okay. It was a basement either way. So well, actually, no, there was a wind. There was like a little, you could like kind of see, it was like half below ground. I don't know. No, we're not going to, deb- I'm not a realtor. I don't give a damn what the room was. Either way, I vomited on myself in that room. So I throw away my hoodie. I wipe it up as clean as I can. And then I got to figure out how I'm going to go upstairs past my whole family shirtless and like explain that. Like, how do I just like, oh yeah, guys, you know. I don't know, I just had to strip down a little bit, you know, I don't, not really, and it, it wasn't that bad, you know, but also, it was, I just felt like it was strange timing, like, it was, like, a very, a very weird thing to do, like, maybe if I had, like, just gotten out of the shower, you know, I could walk past shirtless or something, or it was, like, early in the morning, just gotten out of bed, but, like, no, no, this was, like, right after the family dinner, you know, I don't know, I mean, that's, that's a bald move, that's, like, some alcoholic uncle energy, like, you, you finish your family dinner, and immediately, it's just undo the belt, unbutton the pants, shirt is all the way off, you got the wife beater only, fucking vibing, you know, I, and I'm not quite at that stage of my life yet, so I didn't want to give off that energy, but I just did it, I went the fuck upstairs, and I was like, fuck this, dude, I feel like shit, so I went upstairs, and I went to my room, But I was not allowed to just stay in my room. My mom came up and she asked if I was okay. And she asked me, she was like, what did you take? And she was fucking pissed. And I heard it in her voice. And she wasn't going to argue with me or yell at me because my family was still there. But she was just like, what did you take? And I was like, holy fuck. I need to leave. I got to evacuate the crib for like five days. But I, I didn't know where to go. And I was fucked up. So I was like, oh, you know, just uh, that wine. <laughs> you know, I, oh, that wine. I smoked a little weed earlier. I told her about the, you know, the weed I went and smoked on the walk. She's like, yeah, I knew that, you know, but there's no way. She's like, what'd you take? I was like, I, oh, I just not a clue. You know, it must have been the wine. Must have been the wine. But my A. Hey, It was a rough family Christmas, I tell you what. My mom goes back downstairs, and they call me for dessert, and I'm like, fuck, I gotta gotta get up for dessert, you know? I gotta spin, you know, I gotta make that happen. I go downstairs, and I'm just, I'm a shell of myself. I was, I was, have you ever been just, like, so drained from being fucked up all day that you, you can't even really form a sentence? Like, you just, you feel that heaviness in your head, and you're just, your eyes feel heavy, and you're sitting there like, wow, I'm an idiot right now. That's exactly how I felt on this fine evening. That's exactly how I felt. I went downstairs and I had my dessert. And my grandma kept asking me too. She's like, are you feeling okay? Are you sick? And I was like, no, no, no. And she asked me what probably one of the only times that she's directly said anything about my drug use to me because my grandma, very passive aggressive. She will never directly confront anyone in the family about anything. But the one time she was like, are you on drugs? And then she kind of laughed. She was like, you know, as if it was a joke, like, ha ha ha, you know? And I was like, oh. I am on drugs, Grandma. You know, I didn't say it, but just in my head, I was like, yay, I I am on the drugs. Hey, touche, Grandma. You might have nailed me there. But luckily, we had our dessert, and they're, they're old, so they headed home. And I went back upstairs and went to bed immediately. I was not facing the wrath on Christmas evening. And the following morning, my mom came in and flamed my shit. Absolutely flamed me. But I went over to Tim's house later that day, and I think you know the rest. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Get ready for the part two of the Christmas special. It's either going to drop tomorrow, Christmas Day, or it's going to drop uh, the 26th. It's going to drop soon. I got a banger. We're giving away another pound. You know how it goes. Thank you all for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed. Check out Only Gas. Doses.